Hello YouTube. Yesterday morning I awoke to learn that the Spaceship 2 had crashed, killing one pilot and injuring another. This morning they announced the names of those astronauts. The astronaut who died was a fellow by the name of Michael Oldsbury, who had accumulated 1300 hours by the time he had died. And the pilot injured was Peter Seibel, who has piloted many flights of the Spaceship 1. My sincerest condolences go out to the friends and family of Michael, and I pray for the safe recovery of Peter. This disaster couldn't have come at a worse time. It's happened to just days after the um, after the orbital sciences have had their catastrophic Antares rocket explosion. Already the media is, is uh, talking about what kind of effect this is going to have on the future of commercial spaceflight. And uh, I know that various people are going to be citing these two recent disasters as evidence, evidence that, um, that commercial spaceflight is a bad thing, that it should be stopped, that, uh, the, that uh, space exploration should solely be a, be a government thing. This is, of course, the spacecraft that Richard Branson was planning to use to send tourists into space. And in fact, Branson says this morning, the first commercial flight with seats costing upwards of $200,000 was scheduled for February of next year. And it's not yet known what this disaster means for Branson's space travel dream, but experts say the program could be set back by as many as 10 years. We all want space travel to be safe and reliable, but I think it is very unrealistic to expect that, that um, any space organisation, no matter how reliable and safe they are, I think it would be unreasonable to expect that there would be a 100% spotless record that there would be, never be incident. Anytime you get on a on a commercial airliner, there's always the possibility that the plane will crash or that the plane will need to make an emergency landing. Most of the time, you'll just get on the plane and um, and everything will be fine. But there might be that that one in a million time when there might be something that goes wrong. And um, but of course, with every with every disaster that happens, the engineers they work to rectify to make damn sure that this problem never happens again. Even the most reliable space organizations, they have had their share of problems. Uh, here's the station. Looks like we got us a dragon by the tail. I don't think anyone would disagree that SpaceX are light years ahead of their competition. They are light years ahead of NASA. And yet when they first started, they had three, three consecutive uh, failures of their Falcon 1 rocket. The first one exploded. The, the second two failed to make orbit. And by the fourth time, it was do or die time. And the rocket made orbit, and um, everything was fine. The, uh, and then, of course, when they had their second uh, launch of the Dragon to the International Space Station, if you look at the if you look at the videos, you'll notice that the engine it just it looks like it exploded. It turns out there was some some uh, problem with the engine, so they shut it down and they diverted more power to the to the to the remaining good engines. And the rocket continued chugging along, and it made it into orbit. It sent the Dragon to the International Space Station. What I'm trying to say is that I sincerely hope that these two incidents they do not delay delay uh, the private private space exploration. You know, it's very very tragic that that this has happened. You know, my I have my sincerest condolences go out to to uh, to uh, Michael's friends and family. And Virgin Galactic they've they've said that they plan hope to pick up the pieces and um, they will not will not uh, let their dream die. And well, we all we can only hope that they're able to pick up the pieces and that that um, that uh, this 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 program will go on you know the the uh, the private space exploration is is something that is worth shooting for a future where anyone can just get on a instead of getting on a plane you get on a on a spaceship and you can fly from from uh, London to to Sydney or wherever you know that that is a future that is worth fighting for I sincerely hope that these two incidents I sincerely hope that they do not delay uh, private space exploration my sincerest condolences go out to Michael Oldsbury's family and friends, and I pray, I pray that uh, that Peter Peter Seibel, he he pulls through. I pray that he pulls through and is able to make a fast recovery and is flying again anytime soon. There's always a possibility that uh, uh, you can have a catastrophic failure. Of course, this can happen on any flight. It can happen on the on the last one as well as the first one. So uh, you just plan as best you can to take care of uh, all of these eventualities and uh, you get a well-trained crew and you go fly. 
Okay, the video that you just saw was it was recorded on November 2nd. It's now November 3rd, and uh, this has just appeared in the media. I'd like to take this opportunity to just um, to just update the video with this new information. A rocket science safety expert says Virgin Galactic ignored safety warnings in the years leading up to the deadly crash of its spacecraft in California. Caroline Campbell, from the Netherlands-based International Association for the Advancement of Space Safety, says she can't speculate on the cause of Friday's crash without all the data. However, she says that multiple warnings have been issued to Virgin since 2007, when three engineers died testing a rocket on the ground. Based on all the work we've done, including me writing a paper on the handling of nitrous oxide, we were concerned about what was going on at Virgin Galactic, Campbell said. I sent copies of the paper to various people at Virgin Galactic in 2009, and they were ignored, she said. Campbell said she outlined the concerns in a subsequent phone conversation, but her warning again went unheeded. I warned them that the rocket motor was potentially dangerous, she said. Campbell's warnings related to nitrous oxide, which has been used as a fuel component in previous test flights. The crashed flight was reportedly the first using a new kind of fuel derived from nylon, but it is not clear whether nitrous oxide was also involved. The US National Transportation Safety Board investigators have been sent to the crash site in Mojave Desert to probe the accident, which left co-pilot Michael Olsbury dead and pilot Pete Seibold seriously injured. Virgin Chief Richard Branson told reporters after arriving in Mojave over the weekend that safety had always been the company's paramount concern. Virgin Galactic would not push on blindly with its ambitious space program until the causes of the accident had been determined, he added. This, this is obviously very, um, very distressing to me because, um, because well... Well, I, I, we don't know yet what the, what kind of fuel was used. We know that they were using, um, that they were using this new nylon-based fuel. It had never, it had been tested on the ground many times. It worked okay, but it has never been tested up in the air. But obviously, we don't know yet if, um, if nitrous oxide was used. And well, whoever, whoever was in charge of, um, of uh, choosing the, the uh, propellants for this mission. I would hate to be in their shoes if if nitrous oxide was used and they have to stand before a committee and explain why they ignored the warnings of of these of these experts in the Netherlands. And well, well, this if I I, I, I plead I plead with Virgin Galactic to be open and transparent during this investigation. The I fear that it is not going to be these two incidents that will be be the death of 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 private space exploration what will be the death of it is negligence repeated it won't ignoring ignoring of warnings and so i pray that 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 these that these warnings are heeded that these warnings are heeded from now on and i pray that that nitrous oxide was not used on this mission because if it was that it could mean the difference between 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 uh, private private space exploration taking off and not my, my, my plea to, to Virgin Galactic is essentially, do not become another NASA. Do not. Don't do it. Don't do it. A, 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 a loss of life will not be the cause of, um, of, of private space exploration being cancelled indefinitely. What will cancel space explora private space exploration indefinitely will be, will be ignoring of warnings, repeated negligence. NASA, the NASA, they always seem to get away with, with, with negligence, murder, you name it. And the reason I think that is, is because, is, is because they are essentially a government agency. They have the protection of the U.S. government behind them. Private organizations, they don't, they, they don't have that kind of protection, right? Whereas NASA will probably be able to get off scot-free with, with, with uh, killing, killing um, three astronauts in the Apollo 1 fire, killing 14 astronauts in two shuttle incidents, all right, where they can, where they seem to be able to get away with that off scot free, I don't, I, I, I think a, a private organisation would be very hard pressed to to get off scot free in that regard. Having no, having no, no government ties, they simply do not have their kind of immunity that NASA is, 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 is awarded, is unjustly awarded. NASA did their best through a series of many, many half-truths and, and some outright lies to make it sound like uh, it was an accident. And that's bullshit because uh, it was a horrible disaster, but not an accident. When you've got people that are your technical experts 
jumping up and down, raising hell, trying to start the launch, and being ignored, you can't then, when something goes wrong, turn around and say it was an accident, or it was a bad judgment call, or this or that. And that's as a history of, of being less than truthful about their screw-ups. Just like they did on Apollo. They, they said the astronauts at Apollo, on the Apollo fire, died instantly, which is, in fact, absolutely not true. They died in excruciating, painful death as they were inhaling flaming oxygen. That's how they still operate. Columbia happened for the same reason the Challenger happened, because you had two managers that were hell-bent to say that everything was okay and just come home. And they burned up and killed the astronauts once again, all because they canceled a $200,000 check of the vehicle from space and off from the ground. And one of the top managers canceled that request. I think that they made a mistake by not putting some of the people away during Apollo days, and they repeated that same mistake with Challenger and also Columbia.